morning, everyone. Steve Jones here. Um, give it a couple more minutes for a few people to get into the room and then we'll start the webinar. Okay, I guess we'll get started. Um, good morning, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to attend our sixth and final webinar of this season. Uh, today, we're gonna have Michael from Mycorrhizal Applications uh, give us a presentation and he's gonna educate us on mycorrhizae and how it improves plant health and quality. Michael, the floor is yours. All right, so good morning, everybody. Um, like he said, uh, I'm the sales account manager for mycorrhizal applications. Uh, I cover about 14 states of the upper Midwest and Ohio Valley. Um, and basically, I travel around all those talking to people, trying to educate them on mycorrhizae and educate them on our products and how mycorrhizae work for them and, and help them in their production. So um, we will kind of go over the basics of what mycorrhizae is and and then go into some of our products that we have. So we'll start here, uh, mycorrhizal fungi. Um, essentially mycorrhizal fungi are uh, fungi that's been around for uh, since ancient times. Uh, if we talk evolutionarily, they've been around since plants moved from the water systems into the land. Uh, mycorrhizae makes a physical connection with the plant that is a full symbiosis, um, and it makes a connection with about 90 to 95 percent of land plants. Um, hey, Michael, can I interrupt you for one sec? Yeah, go ahead. Yep, the closer you can be to your microphone, the better. Sometimes you're fading out on us just a little bit. Okay, sorry. Thank I'll you. Try to talk a little bit closer to it. Yep, that'd be um, great. Thanks. So the mycorrhizae can't function without living plants, um, and this is a plant-controlled reaction. So the plant facilitates it completely. It's not a parasitic reaction by the mycorrhizae. It's fully um, controlled by the plant. Uh, the plant basically chooses. It says that I need you, and it, the mycorrhizae will colonize it. Uh, we'll talk about kind of how it does everything else that's on there in a few other slides. So. If we move forward, uh, there are multiple different types of mycorrhizae. Um, when we look at endomycorrhizae, this is what the most common mycorrhizae is. This one makes a, a connection with about 80% of plant species. The next one is going to be ectomycorrhizae. Ectomycorrhizae is probably the one that most people are more familiar with. Um, ectomycorrhizae actually form fruiting bodies, which are going to be the mushrooms that you see and hear about. Um, this particular mycorrhizae makes an uh, connection with about 10% of species. And then we have ect endo mycorrhizae, which is going to be plants that are able to make a connection with both endo and ecto mycorrhizae. We have orchid mycorrhizae, which is going to be a specialized mycorrhizae that's only for orchids. We have ericaceous mycorrhizae, so the ericoid mycorrhizae. This is going to be for uh, rhododendrons, blueberries, um, plants like that. And then we have two less common mycorrhizae that make up about maybe 0.1% uh, of plants on the earth, so not very many at all. They're very specialized. Uh, for what our products are, we really focus on these two up at the top. We focus on endomycorrhizae and we focus on ectomycorrhizae. So we'll kind of start with what endomycorrhizae are. Um, let's take a look right here. So endomycorrhizae are unique in that they form on the inside of the plant 
roots and on the inside of the plant cells. So they actually go through and they inoculate into that root and they begin to germinate inside of the plant cell. And then they produce these vascules that you can see right here. And these right here are, are buscules and they're basically the spores of the mycorrhizae. And that's how the, the mycorrhizae proliferates throughout the plant. You can see right here, this is what a plant would look like with mycorrhizae in it. And this is one that's gonna have no mycorrhizae. So what happens is it forms these uh, cells in, inside of the plant and then it shoots out hyphae. And those hyphae are what are able to absorb extra nutrients and water in the soil. And that's where the benefit of mycorrhizae comes in. So we will keep on going. If we look right here, uh, as you can see, this endomycorrhizae is super microscopic. Um, it takes, uh, it's not gonna be something that you're going to be able to see with the naked eye. That is a picture of a root hair uh, zoomed in uh, times about 50 in order for us to see the hyphae. And even here, you can barely see it. It's these little strands of white that are, um, it looks like spider webs almost. That is what the hyphae are. That is going to be those um, structures that are able to absorb nutrients and water that are in the soil in excess. So if we move on to ectomycorrhizae, ectomycorrhizae is going to be generally for trees, um, hardwood trees, uh, and it's going to be for conifers. Uh, so this is going to be a specialized mycorrhizae, and this is the mycorrhizae that you think of when you think of mushrooms. So a lot of our um, products that we're able to make actually come from mushrooms that are found from collectors. So if, as you can see with this diagram, the ectomycorrhizae are able to cross inoculate through multiple different tree species and the hyphae do not actually go inside of the cell, they form on the outside of the cell. So you're actually able to see this mycorrhizae with the naked eye versus the endomycorrhizae where you will not be able to see it. So again, this is gonna be fruiting bodies of some different types of ectomycorrhizae. And then if you look at this picture to the right, uh, all the way to the right, you'll see that this picture right here is an uninoculated pine seedling. And then this is going to be an inoculated pine seedling. You can see the vast difference. Uh, these are not magnified at all. These are just with the naked eye. And you can see just the enormous difference of root mass that comes from the ectomycorrhizae whenever it's applied to a pine seedling. So I do want to go over some non-mycorrhizal plants because there are some plants that do not form a connection with mycorrhizae. So if we look at the brassic family, cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, um, all of those plants are not going to form a, a relationship with mycorrhizae. So if you have those growing in your greenhouse, it won't hurt them to be exposed to it. It won't do anything negative, but you will not see any benefit with the mycorrhizae. Uh, we have the mustard family. So those guys are not gonna be uh, mycorrhizal. Beets, spinach, carnations, and pigweed. And now there are some other plants that are non-mycorrhizal that we're still finding out. Again, we're learning every day uh, with this company because we're all research-based. Um, and one that I do want to say that's not up here is uh, that's grown in a greenhouse is portulaca. So portulaca is not going to be mycorrhizal. Um, so this right here is just, I like to include this in all of my slides because it's something that you're able to access. You can go to our website and you can find this entire list of mycorrhizal plants. It'll tell you everything that's most common for endomycorrhizae, for ectomycorrhizae, and it'll tell you some of the non-mycorrhizal plants that are commonly found, such as azaleas, blueberries, um, and sedge or orchids. Uh, these are basically just plants that are not going to work with the mycorrhizae that we offer. So let's kind of get into how the mycorrhizae works. So within the soil, uh, plants are limited. Uh, the mycorrhizae hyphae, like I was saying, will grow out and proliferate from that plant and it increases the absorption area. So when you think of a plant, it has a depletion zone. This depletion zone is as much area as that plant can access. When you add mycorrhizae, you're extending that uh, depletion zone and allowing that plant to access far more nutrients and water from its surrounding areas than it would be able to without the mycorrhizae. 
So this is just a great diagram that you might have seen in a few ads. Uh, it's kind of been in multiple different grower magazines, uh, but this is a diagram of how it actually works. So the propagules that are found in our products are put into the soil or they're put into or on top of a root. They're made to come into connection with the root. Once it connects with the root, the uh, mycorrhizae will germinate and it will go inside of the plant root and then it will start to um, multiply. And then inside of the root, it'll begin to produce those arbuscules and hyphae will begin to form on the outside of the root and shoot out. Those hyphae will grow in surrounding areas and start to increase the root's ability to uptake moisture and uh, nutrients from the soil. The way that this does this is that the plant will actually give the mycorrhizae lipids and sugars. And the way the plant does that is it produces more chloroplasts. So a secondary benefit of mycorrhizae is that you're gonna have some darker colored foliage uh, because the plant is going to be producing more chloroplasts in order to feed the mycorrhizae. So right here, I wanted to show the difference between a root hair and what the mycorrhizal uh, uh, hyphae will look like. So the root hair on the left, as you can see, that's a picture that is taken, no zooming. That's just a normal thing that you'd be able to see with your naked eye. And uh, we know that a root tip can only absorb at the very tip of the root. So it's not gonna be able to absorb along the entire body of the root hair. When you look at the mycorrhizal fungi, they're actually able to absorb along their entire bodies. So they're not restricted to only absorbing nutrients at the tip. So if you look at this picture, this, this Y-shaped um, figure is the root hair and these small, tiny little uh, figures, those are what the hyphae are. So again, those hyphae are able to absorb along their entire uh, length of their bodies. So, so some of the benefits are gonna be found in our container grown plants. Um, you're gonna be looking at an increased root mass. It's not gonna create the plant to form a root ball and become root bound in the plant. It's actually gonna help the plant uh, not become root bound. And it also reduces the uh, transplant shock when you are planting those container grown plants, uh, whether it be in another basket or into the field. Um, it's gonna increase water uptake. Like we were saying, uh, the uh, soil is limited. When you look at a container bound plant, they have limited access to nutrients and water as it is. So what you're doing is increasing the uh, efficiency of the plant's uh, ability to um, uptake the water as well as the nutrients. And it's also going to increase your shelf life for these plants. Uh, the, the mycorrhizae act as storage units. And so in times of need, the plant will ask the mycorrhizae for what it has stored and it'll pump it up to the plant uh, to create a healthier plant. What this means for as far as shelf life goes is that your shelf life will extend by 36, 48 hours because the plant, the mycorrhizae's excess water will be pumped up to the plants. This also goes for nutrient uptake. Uh, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna increase the plant's efficiency of um, using the fertilizers that you're putting onto your plants. And it also works together with these microorganisms to convert insoluble minerals into the soluble form. And again, it's gonna reduce leaching from your pots and containers. So you're gonna be getting more fertilizer actually used and absorbed by the plants and not wasted. So if we look right here, this is a trial that was done a couple years ago uh, with Coreopsis. This is going to be with and without mycorrhizae. So the two that are without mycorrhizae are gonna be this one right here. I'm not sure you can see my mouse, but I'm circling around the one right here in the middle. And then the one all the way over here to the right. Both of these have no mycorrhizae in them. Um, the other four do. It's just a matter of if they have full fertilizer or if they have reduced fertilizer and then what type of mycorrhizae we used. Um, with these plants, as you can see, the ones with no mycorrhizae wilted uh, much faster than the other ones with the mycorrhizae. This is about 48 hours without water. We know as growers that if we put water in these guys, most likely they'll bounce back up and they'll be able to be sold. Um, but if you're walking through a greenhouse or you're walking through a retail greenhouse and you're a customer, you're not gonna go for these guys. Whereas these ones over here that look fully fine, uh, you're far, far more likely to buy those 
as a, as a customer than you would these wilted ones. So I just wanted to also include some pictures of our root mass. Uh, so you can see with full fertilizer over here, you're going to um, see a difference in root mass with the mycorrhizae on the right, as well as this picture you're going to see with mycorrhizae on the right versus this one without mycorrhizae um, for Cultivate of 2018. Uh, so I wanted to go through some other documented benefits. Um, these are, you know, we don't ever want to classify mycorrhizae as a insecticide or an herbicide or anything like that. But essentially what it does is it increases the plant's health. So when you increase the plant health, it's going to, plants are going to be able to tolerate pests and pathogens a lot easier. Um, it's also going to increase soil quality. So when you look at uh, soils, uh, especially for landscapers, um, and people that are planting and they don't want to do tilling anymore. This increased soil quality is basically through the production of glomulin and that glomulin over time will increase uh, the soil's organic matter and make it a, a more healthy and, and viable soil. So uh, when we think about mycorrhizae, there's a, there's a few products on the market now and some of them are included in your soil, some of them are sitting on the shelf. Um, so one thing that makes our company unique compared to some of our competitors is our basic product comes with four species of mycorrhizae. It does not only come with one. And so I kind of want to go over what those species are and what they uh, do. Um, so we use these four species through multiple different research and published articles um, to find which ones would be the most efficient at growing and helping our plants that we're using. So we found that Glomus interatices is the most common um, and it is the most beneficial when it comes to certain aspects of growing. Uh, so that is the, the number one species that we offer. And that's also the number one species that you're gonna find in our competitors. You're not gonna be able to find those other three uh, species if it's a competitor product of ours. Um, and then the one thing I wanna point out is that different species are responsible for different functional benefits. What that means is that each one of those species has its own benefit for the plant and the plant connection with multiple species at the same time. So essentially when you're giving it multiple species, you're giving your plant um, a multivitamin versus say only taking vitamin C. So if we look right here, this is another one of those documents that you can go on our website and you can find. It's uh, available for you guys to click on and to read up on it. Um, I took this page right here and I kind of went through some of the uh, highlights of it. If we look at the Glomus interatices, again, this is the most common species used in the horticulture and it's what our competitors are using. Um, it is um, a little bit different from the others and that's kind of what I'm going to go over now. Uh, if we look at the Glomus mosaic, uh, it is shown that it's effective root colonization with time release fertilizers. It's going to promote disease suppression and it protects against heavy metal toxicity as well as keeping a healthier root system. All of these are scientifically documented that were not found to be done in the Glomus interatices. And then when we move over to our other two, Glomus aggregatum is going to be effective root colonization with the time release fertilizers as well. This one is tolerant of high fertility levels. So when, when growers are using higher rates of fertilization, uh, maybe 300 parts per million or more constant feed. Uh, this mycorrhizae species is going to perform a lot better with those plants. It also is going to improve plant success in sandy soils um, and it keeps uh, roots healthier and protects against the heavy metal toxicity. And then our last species over here, um, this one is going to be very comparable to interatices and what it does, but it also promotes disease suppression. So by increasing the plant's health, it also effectively has been shown to suppress verticulum wilt and it protects against heavy metal toxicity. So now when we look at what mycorrhizae is, we kind of know what that is now and why we want to choose multiple species. So now it's how do we apply it and when do we apply it? So you want to apply my mycorrhizae um, four weeks. Uh, or you want to apply it as early as possible because it does take about four weeks for the inoculation to happen. After that four weeks, it's going to take an additional four weeks for someone to see the benefits of mycorrhizae. Uh, so you want to apply as soon as possible. This also lowers cost because you treat 
uh, the mycorrhizae based on soil volume, not based on the size of the plant. So if you're applying to plug trees, you're gonna be coming out at a lot lower cost than if you're applying to six inch or seven inch uh, um, containers already. So kind of keep that in mind when you're thinking about mycorrhizae. Also, I didn't include this in this slideshow, but keep in mind that certain fungicides work with mycorrhizae and certain ones do not work with mycorrhizae. Um, if you're using Root Shield, Actinovate, uh, Subdue Max, um, a few other ones, those all work just fine with mycorrhizae. There are some that do not work with mycorrhizae. Um, you can check on our website and get that, or you can email me and I can send you over the fungicide list uh, that goes with it. Um, that would be pretty easy for me to do. Um, so now I wanted to kind of talk about our products. Our products are all OMRI listed, um, except for one, and I'll kind of go over that in a few minutes. We do have a two-year shelf life on all of our products, and they are stored under normal warehouse conditions. There's no reason to refrigerate it. There's no reason to keep it out of uh, freezing temperatures. If it freezes, it's going to be okay. Um, our products are based on what we call propagules. Propagules are colonized root fragments and fungal spores combined. So the root fragments, um, a product that has root fragments, are actually going to be able to colonize quicker than the fungal spores. They're already germinated inside of the roots themselves, so it works a lot quicker with the root fragments. And then the fungal spores are, again, normally dormant, so they germinate a little bit slower. But these are what's so resilient. So this is what's going to increase your shelf life. And even after that two-year mark, you're still going to have a lot of viable spores in there because they, it takes a very long time for spores to um, degrade um, almost indefinitely. So I kind of want to go over what our packages are. So we have our granular products that are going to come in endo and endo-ecto. This is going to be more geared towards landscapers um, that are going to be looking to broadcast this or to apply some of this granular product into, a, um, into their holes right before they plant their plants as kind of added insurance. Um, or it's going to be geared towards somebody that's going to want to soil incorporate. So it's about the same size of a product as like kitty litter. Um, and it does do really well with soil incorporation. Uh, then we have our Ultra Fine, which comes in um, uh, 20 pound bags and one pound bags. This is going to be on a clay carrier. This product is going to be more geared towards somebody, again, for the 20 pound bag, someone that wants to soil incorporate. Uh, the smaller bags, I would say that's going to be for a small grower that maybe wants to do plug dips. So you can put two ounces into five gallons of solution and make a plug dip out of our products. and keep going that way. Um, or it's going to be with somebody who's kind of on the fence and wants to see how mycorrhizae is going to work for them. And that one pound bag can be a really great trial product. Uh, we also have Soluble Max, which is going to be our uh, pristine uh, uh, bag. That one is going to have nine species of endo and 11 species of ecto. So it's got all of the species that we're capable of making. And it is, it's geared towards higher dollar crops. It does only come in a one pound bag. And that is something I would say would be maybe someone who's growing tomatoes or uh, it's maybe someone who's growing hemp or um, medical marijuana, that type of thing. So our newest product is going to be our injector endo. This one is going to be a fully flowable product. It's not on a clay carrier, it's on a humic carrier. That uh, humic carrier is not organic, uh, but we are releasing an organic version of this um, within the next few weeks. So uh, that's exciting for us. Um, it's super concentrated and what it does is about 20 grams. It comes with a scoop. You'll do a 20 gram scoop in a one gallon solution and mix that up and it gives you about 100 gallons of trench. So it's super concentrated. It goes a really long ways and it, it's gonna be geared towards someone who is running everything through their injector. Uh, the one thing I will say is that it needs to be, the filters need to be removed. So it will not pass through anything larger than a, or anything smaller than a 50 mesh screen. So normally I just suggest uh, just to remove all filters when you apply it. Uh, it is a one-time application, so there's no need to reapply. Uh, so it, it, again, this is gonna be a product that goes a long way for some growers. Still has- hey, Michael? Intent, like, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Finish your thought there, and then I have a couple of questions that have popped up. No worries. 
Um, so yeah, it, it does have a two year shelf life. So that's, that's kind of where I was going to end on that. So, okay. Um, so the first one is, um, somebody asked a question, um, does the granular can use the granular as a replacement for a root stimulator. They use a root stimulator when they are planting trees and shrubs, um, from a, a like bonite or fertilone product or something like that. So can the granular replace that? Um, so I would have to look into what uh, else is in the root stimulator. What most likely it is, is it's a mycorrhizal com uh, product combined with uh, some other um, things. So it looks like it's an IBA, like indole-3-butyric acid. Oh, so I am, uh, honestly, if it's working for you, then I'm, I, I might just do a trial to see. Um, it could you be used as a stimulator for your roots. Um, but again, it's not, it's not something that's going to like, it's, it's going to take a root those, stimulator like this is. Right, exactly. It's still going to okay. be, a, it's still going to take that full inoculation period before you're going to see any growth. It's not going to make anything happen like really quickly, if that makes okay. sense. Okay. Okay. Then the other one was the humic acid mm -hmm. that's in this, the carrier. Mm -hmm. um, will that have any effect on soil pH? Will it drive it down a little bit? It may. Uh, it's something to test out. I don't think that we've had any issues with it. Uh, it's been out for a year now, and I've not had anyone um, say that it has affected their pH. Um, okay. But again, it's still something to just kind of take a look at. Since you're only applying it one time, I highly doubt that it is going to have any effect on your soil pH, uh, okay. just because it's, a, it's, a, it's such a small amount. I mean, 20 grams of it is going into 100 gallons. So right, right. And, and, and sometimes that driving that soil pH down is good if you're on certain mm -hmm. crops. So it right. could be a good thing. Right. Okay. Yep. Okay. I think that was the two. Thanks. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So I've got a few more slides here. Um, so one of the things I wanted to touch on is because this is a new product for a lot of people um, and it's one of those things where you don't want to put it through your entire production just based off of a presentation or based off of something that someone has said. Uh, that's kind of why we came out with these one pound bags. Uh, it comes with it. We do have it in the ultrafine endo and the ultrafine endo ecto. So if you're doing any trees and shrubs, you could use the endo ecto. Um, this is a very cost effective way to do uh, a large number of trials. Like I was saying earlier, it is two ounces per five gallons. So you're going to get 40 gallons out of that one pound of drench or plug dips. Um, and that's going to be something that will go a very long ways. It does have a two year shelf life with a resealable bag. So if you wanted to do a small trial the first time or, you know, however you wanted to, to do your trial, we do have some target plants that we suggest such as fall mums or poinsettias. Um, just because these crops we hold on to for a lot longer in the greenhouse. When you're looking at uh, some of our or some of our annuals, uh, we're not holding on to those in the greenhouse as long as we think of how long the mycorrhizae takes to work, right? So if it takes four weeks to inoculate and then an additional four weeks for the grower to see the benefit, yet it's a crop that the grower only keeps in the greenhouse for six weeks, are you really going to see the benefit? Most likely not. It's going to be your customers that see the benefit. They're going to see that shelf life um, last longer, and they're going to see uh, their plants are going to perform easier whenever they're under stress. So a lot of times we have people that take their plants home and they don't water, they go on vacation, they don't ever fertilize again, and then they come back and they, they didn't have success with the plant and they blame the grower, uh, when in reality it really is the, the the homeowner, uh, the customer. Uh, so mycorrhizae, again, is going to be that added insurance for those homeowners. Um, it's going to help with uh, it's going to help with drought tolerance and those guys that don't water regularly and don't fertilize after it's taken out. It's it's going to help all of those people have more success with your plants. Uh, so that's why you know even those plants that are out of the greenhouse in six weeks, they're still going to see the benefits. Your customers will. So that's kind of how we talk about our um, trials. And if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to contact me. Um, that's kind of all I have right now. Um, so, yeah. Excellent. Um, thanks a lot, Michael. We appreciate it. And I, I know the questions will come in um, and as they come, we'll get them emailed over to you. Yeah, um, and real quick, before, before everybody starts to sign off, um, 
we got another Mike here that's going to do a presentation for us quick from uh, Excalibur Poly. We got an early order program coming up uh, for them. And so uh, Mike was just going to talk real quick. And um, Excalibur is a new vendor for us as of last fall. Um, we've got uh, quite a little of their poly out there already in it, and uh, we're real happy with it. So, uh, Mike, if you wanted to share your screen, that would be great. Okay. Actually, is there a camera? Can we use the camera or the video? No. You can if you want. Okay, I was just going to just, uh, <laughs> it's a quick intro. No problem. That's okay. Well, what I can do here is um, I'll just share my screen. I just want to thank Steve and uh, I'll just go to, to share here, guys. Let's go. Okay. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, just wanted to thank uh, Steve again and uh, the Testament team for allowing me just to introduce myself in Excalibur uh, Plastics. Um, we met Steve at uh, Cultivate uh, back in uh, 2019, uh, where we, uh, we have a booth set up. And, um, you know, a lot of times customers and uh, people walking the floor come to our booth and ask, uh, you know, who's Excalibur and, and what do you do? So I think uh, today that's basically all I want to do is kind of explain who we are, uh, talk about, a little bit about our capabilities um, you know, we've been here in our first 12 months working with Tessman and everything's been great. Uh, we attended their show back in August uh, where we were able to meet uh, a lot of the customers face to face and we were, we were able to help a fair number of them with some of their poly replacements last year. So, um, you know, we, we want to thank Steve just for, for allowing us to help, uh, help you guys out, um, you know, with some of your needs. And uh, we're also looking forward to attending their show again this year and hope to see some of you there. Um, so basically just to, you know, really get, give a little visual about uh, Excalibur and some of our capabilities and our coverage and some of our service uh, abilities um, is that, uh, so our company has been around for, uh, in business for over 15 years. Uh, we're the exclusive dealer of uh, the Nor uh, North American dealer of Eiffel Plastics. And I'm just going to get into some of those details a little bit later with some data sheets just to go over some of our uh, more popular products. Um, and the, the product is made in Italy. Uh, we've got offices in Canada and Mexico. So I'm just going to kind of fly through uh, the planet here and just to kind of give you an idea as to, um, you know, where we are uh, with respect to where you may be. And also just to show you what uh, some of our, uh, what we're surrounded by. <laughs> so as you can see here, um, this is where our office is. Uh, the company was started uh, by Richard Colsani, who was also a former greenhouse grower and uh, greenhouse owner, uh, where our headquarters is located in uh, Ruthven uh, or Leamington, Ontario, where we service both Canada and the, unit, the U.S. Um, so here's basically, if you take a look here, I just kind of show you, we're, we're kind of in the, we call it like the, the mecca of, of greenhouses in, in Canada. Um, we're surrounded by, uh, you know, within a 10 mile radius of our office, there are, you know, a couple thousand acres of greenhouses uh, where we supply poly, ground cover plastic, uh, shade systems, uh, greenhouse grow lights, uh, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Uh, but our production facility um, is also just, just down the street from us. We will be moving into a 60,000 square foot uh, new warehouse um, in the spring of 2020 or of this year. Um, so Excalibur has expanded outside of Ontario into other provinces. So I'm just going to zoom out here. Uh, other than obviously here in Ontario, we've also uh, service uh, the Niagara region. Uh, with a lot of uh, uh, flower growers here in, in Niagara, uh, where we supply a good majority, as you can see, of uh, the greenhouses here. Um, We've also expanded out to other parts of Ontario, Michigan, uh, the Eastern US, uh, Western Canada as well. So I just uh, just want, like I said, just want to take you around the uh, North America here, just to just give you an idea as to our capabilities. Um, you know, but what we what we feel is that our biggest strength is just with our service. Um, you know, at any time we stock between two to three million dollars worth of poly with all different widths and formulas. Um, you know, we have. Uh, re several rewinders at our warehouse where we cut custom length rolls uh, off of master rolls. 
okay? And in the past few years, um, we have been um, servicing through some of our partnerships and distributorships, uh, such as the ones that we have with Tessman. Um, you know, throughout the U.S., some of the, you know, 20 of the top 50 growers in the U.S. So here's Tessman here, and we've been able to just obviously service a lot of their customers just in the Minnesota area. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, now that you kind of know us to some of our, you know, the reach that we have and some of the services, you know, we can get your poly um, with any order uh, within a week or two uh, in any emergency situation. So, uh, like I said, that is one of our strengths. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pull up some of our data sheets because I just want to go over a couple, uh, a couple formulas that are, are very popular, especially in the U.S. Uh, there's my Raptors. Uh, hopefully that didn't offend any Minnesota Timberwolves fans. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to start here with... Uh, our stock. So basically, like I said, we have between two to three million dollars worth of stock. We all have different sizes and widths, uh, 7.2 mil, um, different formulas uh, that you know we can cater to any sort of uh, sort of plant or you know type of produce that's being grown. Um, we also have some eight mil poly for non-growing areas for more shading for like as in uh, brown and white down here. Uh, as well as we also have our si uh, line of our six mil poly. Uh, you'll see here it says out and in. I'll get into that a little bit more detail. We also supply tubes. I know that um, last year we had uh, several customers uh, through Steve that had uh, that needed tubes. And we also had different shades of white um, that we can also supply. So, um, you know, all of these, um, if you have any questions, of course, please reach out to Steve. Uh, with any requests or with any questions, and for sure I can uh, pass along any information uh, to Steve. Uh, so the next thing that I want to look at here is our, our six mil. So this would be our six mil. When I said out and in, this was what we consider outside layer, uh, which just means it's a clear formula. It's a four-year film. Um, these are our data sheets here. Um, so more importantly, everything down here, basically everyone is really always interested in, uh, you know, over just, just not just only the strength of it, but also the optical properties. So here you'll see the total visible light uh, is a 90% uh, with a direct light transmittance of 64. Um, these are pretty standard um, uh, formulas, uh, but what we will say is that uh, our film is this long life uh, particular poly is a five layer film and uh, the tensile strength is, is, is very strong. We, uh, like I said, a lot of people here in that have ordered it through Steve have ordered six mil. Um, see here, you can see the UV light transmittance, 12%. Uh, the uh, IR effectiveness is 60, okay? Um, now, as far as the six mil poly, uh, this is with anti-condensate. So this would be what we consider obviously the, the inside layer. And with our anti-condensate, our manufacturer, it is injected during the manufacturing and not sprayed on. And how that works is basically just means that uh, uh, gravity um, helps the anti-condensate migrate through all the layers and it's activated every season. Um, so, you know, that you can see here that the uh, um, long lace formula, it's, it's, these are formulated to withstand harsh weather conditions, uh, including hail and heavy snow. Um, I know when I told Steve that our poly is UV friendly, that was something that he, that was new to him. But, uh, you know, in the past there were uh, lines of poly that uh, um, was not bee friendly, where they had bees just uh, not working the way they were supposed to. So um, that is one thing that we can, uh, we, we like to uh, boast about. Um, and also that uh, our poly is also uh, there's an additive that has an anti-static uh, that's just basically just to help to ensure with ease of installations. I know a lot of our installers uh, are very happy with it, um, just the way that it handles and the way that it unfolds. It's just uh, very easy to, to install. Hey, and Mike, I have had comments from people that have put it on that said it does unfold nice. It's, they did make a specific note of that. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over uh, something that I had a lot of discussions about at your show last year. 
uh, with some uh, a few customers um, here in Canada, uh, specifically in Ontario and Niagara region and out, out west, uh, we we supply at 7.2 mil, and uh, I would say about 85% of our customers uh, in Canada um, use the 7.2 mil poly, and what, the reason why is 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 really you know ov obviously for durability, and you know I'm assuming that in Minnesota it's, it's a little harsher than even where we are, I mean, we're, you guys are a little bit for, further north than, than us. Um, but um, so for all you customers that are in, in the Minnesota area, we, we see that uh, there may be a benefit uh, with going with the 7.2. So what you'll see here is a lot of the, you know, the total light transmission and transmittances are, 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 are fairly high. Um, but what you see here, the IR effectiveness. Okay, so this is where we see a lot of benefits especially for our customers here in Canada, where we uh, see, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of year round growing, uh, a lot of heating that's happening. So um, with some of the discussions that were had at, at your show, Steve, um, uh, there were a few customers who were interested in trying it out um, only because like I said, they were, they were heating year round, they're growing year round. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can see up to, you know, around 30%, uh, up to 30% of savings you know, with proper inflation, you know, and a proper installation. Um, so that, you know, Multiva, I would say, is, is, is probably our, it, it is our flagship brand. And also, there is the inside layer, uh, there you go, which has the anti-condensate. And uh, one of the benefits with the Multiva, with the anti-condensate inside layer, is that it is a, up, to the, up to 28 feet wide, it is a single fold. So the benefit of a single fold is that uh, it eliminates those fold lines, um, which maximizes effectiveness of the anti-condensate, which means that the water will run all the way to the gutters, uh, minimizing any dripping of water onto the crops and minimizing crop damage. Uh, this is also bee friendly. Um, this is obviously, it's ideal for all greenhouse crops. And this is also has the anti-static uh, for the ease of installation. Um, anything up to, this is actually a seven layer film. So uh, when we're talking about uh, strength and tensile, uh, you know, the mechanical properties of it, uh, this is a very, very durable poly. You know, any rips that happen, what we find uh, with our testing is that uh, when a rip occurs, it, it basically will, will rip and then it will stop uh, very shortly afterwards just because of just the strength that it's been, uh, uh, the way that it's been manufactured and formulated. Um, you know, some of the other things that, uh, uh, you know, that, that are benefits uh, of them are um, we have other formulas that are that we have just uh in the 7.2 mil uh, poly that we just released um i mean we can look into that we're doing some testing right now it's called uv open and basically that's that's for um a, a basic for higher uv um transmittance so a lot of the the good uv that's letting in we're, we're looking at you know we're doing a lot of tests right now so we're looking to get to have a lot of data on that sometime this spring um, we've had several hundred acres of it installed here in Leamington, so we're, we should have a lot of good data on that. And uh, you know, hopefully, that this is something that we will be able to pass on to uh, to some of the customers out there in Minnesota. Okay, so um, as far as the poly goes, uh, that, that's what we've got. So what I'm going to share next is uh, our. I've got a lot of sports things here, as you can see. Whoops. I just want to get into just lastly here, get into our light. I know this is this is new. Here, so basically, uh, we have just become a uh, a dealer for Mega Photon. So uh, the company is. Um, They've been manufacturing for all the big, uh, big dealers in the past, um, and now we've, you know, we have been lucky enough to, to partner up with them. Uh, they've got 15 years of experience in you know, greenhouse assimilation lighting, the largest HPS and LED factories in the world. 
Um, they've got all the proper ISO uh, certifications. As you can see here, certif certificates of compliances. Um, so a lot of you may not know them, but this is one of our popular uh, lines here. It's just the internal reflector. I'm just going to go over it quickly here because I know it's, um, uh, you know, I don't want to get too, too, too much detail, but basically here with this particular light and this bulb, uh, you know, there's significant more lighting. Uh, there's a lot of savings on maintenance, no more cleaning of, of the bulb or the reflector because the, the reflector is inside the bulb. Uh, significant uh, longer light bulb, more effective burning hours. So it uh, saves on electrical installations and cables uh, and very, very easy to install. Uh, we also do have the line of the double-ended lights um, as well as, uh, you know, the proper different reflectors. Uh, there's the wide version and, uh, um, you know, our, our, our bulbs are all in our arc tubes are from Philips. So I just wanted to just put that out there because, like I said, it, uh, when I was in Minnesota visiting, uh, there was a little bit of interest. And so I just wanted to make people aware that uh, this is something that we can um, provide. So, so that's basically it, guys. I just want to thank everybody for your time and for uh, and Steve to, for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to, uh, to introduce myself and Excalibur to, to all your customers. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing you all hopefully at the show. And then uh, we're working on that early order program, Steve, with you. So, um, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to, to, to helping you guys out and all of, you, all of the growers. Thanks again, okay. Steve. I'll pass back to you. Awesome, Mike. Mike, hey, thanks. I know it took us a few tries to get this to work, so appreciate you coming on. Um, yeah, we have the early order stuff. Um, Mike and I are working on it. We'll have it hopefully by the first part of March. Place orders in March and April for delivery in the early fall. Um, that's what we're planning, and I think that's all I know. I appreciate you guys all hanging on for a little bit longer webinar. Thanks again. Have a great day. All right.